Hi, I'm Glenn Whip with the Los Angeles Times. We're continuing our Emmy Contender series and joining us today from The Good Place, William Jackson Harper. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, how you doing? So you are in the middle right now. You've filmed four episodes of season four. Mm -hmm. What can you what can you tell us? What what's, oh man? So I mean, we ended through. I mean, it seems like you're involved in a bunch of things right now. Where basically, I'm going to ask you, what can you tell us? And it's like, oh man, yeah, that's going to be your it's answer. Gonna, it's going to be a, you're going to get a lot of that. <laughs> um, yeah, but we I, we we left the gang. Um, Chidi's memory had been wiped yet again, kind of. But this was yeah. like a really significant thing, where. You know, he was leaving Eleanor and their kind of love. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they would have sort of a, you know, a fighting chance. Yeah. And we're trying to save humanity, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, if everybody just goes to hell, that doesn't yeah. seem fair. So it's, right. you know, it seems like the right thing to do. Okay. You know? So how's that working out so far, do you think? Well, you know, I mean, you. It's You're a hopeful show. It's, it's a, a hopeful it's, it's, show. It's a very hopeful show. Yeah. And and so I mean, it's dealt with 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 great humor, and uh, you know it's like and also the you know the stakes are high. The stakes are very high because it's like for all of us, you know, everything that we're struggling with just pales in comparison to what we're up against. Right. You know. Um, of course, you know, Chidi has his brain wiped, so it's. You know, for him, it's it. Those stakes are different, you know. Um, but like for for the gang, we are dealing with eternal suffering, or something resembling a paradise, I right. guess. And and actually, giving humans a chance to have a shot at something better after, you know. Uh, it seems kind of trivial to to zero in on like Chidi and Eleanor when. You frame it that way, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. Uh, I think that's. I feel like that's also kind of like the, the general message of the show is that like you know it's like you, you know you try to fix yourself as much mm -hmm. as you can, but really it's more about putting, you know, goodness and fairness and beauty into the world as much as you can, you know. Right. And, and so it's, in in that way, I think everyone's everyone everyone's grown quite a bit. Sure. You know. Yeah, I think. I mean, for me personally, that's what I responded to the most would be, I mean, the romance was cool. It was a beautiful story. Yeah. But the fact that Eleanor kind of made Chidi his best self, or at least, you know, took a step or two along that direction. Yeah. That's what's like hopeful and cool about this show. Yeah. And, and, and also maybe not investing so much in the idea of what's good mm -hmm. and the idea of, 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 of what's right, but really investigating what it is. And, you know, how do you arrive at your best self? Sometimes it's through someone that you would judge as someone who would bring out your worst tendencies, you know. And I think in the case of Eleanor and Chidi, you know, she's, she's abrasive. She's, you know, very, she's, she's very selfish, mm -hmm. um, but she's also very smart. And, you know, a lot of things are coming from a lot of pain. And then, like, once you can see through all of that, which I think Chidi has started to do, you know, over the last couple of seasons, um, there's, there's a lot to be learned from, from her. Yeah. And, you know, she's also, she's not rigid, you know. She's, like, Chidi is very rigid. There's, like, there's got to be a book. There's got to be an answer. And for her, it's like, you know, maybe there isn't. And I think opening him up to that possibility is really what propels his character forward or my character forward. I'm playing him. He's my <laughs> character. Have you, have you, doing this show... I mean, the show's about that you can change, people can change, people yeah. can get better. Um, I mean, you've talked a little about your own sort of anxieties and, and yeah. hang-ups and, and rigidity. Have you, has doing this show changed you, or at least made you think about those sorts of things? Because we're all trying to change, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm great. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm not trying to change anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like I think the biggest change honestly is you know, 
knowing where next month's rent is coming yeah. from is <laughs> great. It also, just having that worry taken off mm -hmm. of, of my plate for a little while is sort of opened me up to a lot more things and opened me up to a little bit more self-reflection, mm. which is, you know, pretty great. It's like a luxury. I mean, yeah. Because you're not, you're not having to worry about, I mean, because when you got this series, you yeah. were close to just saying, okay, maybe not. I was thinking right. about packing it in. Yeah. I was, you know, I mean, I was, I, I think I'd been fair. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd given the, the, the industry a, enough time. Um, but it was also getting to a point where I was just like, am I, am I actually happy doing this or is this a thing that I'm doing because it's what I've always done and what I've gotten the most validation for? So let me just continue mm -hmm. to try to, this is the only way that I know that I can contribute. And, um, and I had sort of hit this wall where that wasn't, A, wasn't gonna be enough, and B, it was like starting to actively make me unhappy, you know? Right, right. And so, uh, so it, yeah, this is, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a luxury to be able to, I know. to, to, to do what you like and, yeah. and, and feed yourself and yeah. stuff like that, you know? Have you been, I imagine you, you have been just constantly surprised by the number of ways the writers can reset the good place universe. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean our writers are brilliant. I mean, they're, it, it's like the most intimidating, incredibly smart room that I have ever walked in. And you know, I remember, actually I went in one, one day with, with Darcy Mm -hmm. uh, it was just me and Darcy, and we went and had lunch with the writers, and Mike uh, walked us through all of, I think this was season, I think it was season three. And, you know, they were, they, he walked us through the whole thing, and was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And they started to, you know, start writing again and pitching ideas. And I felt like I was intruding so hard. <laughs> I felt like I'm not supposed to be here right now. Like, they're, yeah. they're, they're talking way above my pay grade yeah. right now, and I... And I, and I would also have ideas, and I was like, I, you know, I really, I shouldn't be, I'm not going to say anything, right. because I'm just going to get in the way. They have a yeah. flow here, yeah, yeah. and they yeah. haven't let us down yet, so, yeah. you know. Hey, one, you, know you, you have to wonder, though, you're in the fourth season now, like how many times can they just keep reinventing this show? I yeah. bet they wonder that, too. Yeah, you know? yeah, you know, I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, I think with something that is, that is this ambitious, right. um, there's a potential for running out of track, uh, yeah. you know, that is, that is dramaturgically sound um, as per the rules that we've set up, you know, mm -hmm. for the show. It, it's easy to run out of track on that. It's easy to, to sort of like hit the, the wall. Right. And, um, but they, 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 they always find ways to just keep it new, keep a new like, real like high stakes sort of uh situation to put mm -hmm. us in you know so there's always there's always like sort of a pressure cooker feel like when we're working on the scenes when we're reading the episodes because nothing is luxury everything is meant to propel the narrative forward and it's they do that with do they have with some fart more, jokes do they have <laughs> do they have some more you're about a third of the way through four do you think there's some more track down there is the track you, you oh there's so much track there's a lot of track there's a track there's a lot of track okay. Yeah. We had, we had a question from a, a reader, Owen, who is wondering how deep do you dive into the moral philosophies that Chidi teaches? Because you talked about being in that writer's room. I mean, then you have to be the one who just like says all this stuff. Right. And absorbs with authority. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the eye roll. Well, yeah, with authority. <laughs> I mean, you know, honestly, I'm hanging on for dear life. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, I, I really, I, I give myself as much of uh, a, a sort of cursory understanding of the subject as I can mm -hmm. um, because I have to land those fart jokes. So, you know, I can't get too it wrapped really up. It just keeps coming back. It always comes yeah. back to fart jokes, yeah. you know. Um, but it, yeah, it's like I have to, so it's like I, I do, I, I go as deep as I can and still understand what I'm doing, what I'm saying. I mean, like, I, I tried to read um, What We Owe to Each Other by T.M. Scanlon, which is one of the books that we talk about in our show. And I've 
gotten like maybe 10 pages in and I am utterly flummoxed. I like, I, I, just, I just, I can't, I, I, just, I, I read the sentence and I'm like, I know what that means. I re- go on to the next sentence, which is building on the sentence before, mm-hmm. like, like, sen- you know, uh, like things work. Do, like yeah. a paragraph will do. And, yes. and I'm just lost. And it's not because none of it makes sense. It's just, there's a lot of thought that goes into what he's laying out. And I'm, just, I'm just not smart enough to get it all. So it's um, so yeah. There's some some people that have really distilled it down for us. It's that's useful. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think of uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about I, what you might consider the signature cheaty episode from season three, the Jeremy Baramy episode. Yeah. And he's in the class there with his big vat of chili. Yeah. And he's like laying out, he goes on kind of a screed, you know, yeah. um, where nihilism is the answer. And that, I mean, when you, when you rolled your eyes about delivering with authority, but you were, that was a powerful little monologue there. Yeah, well, I felt that, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've definitely had those moments where I'm like, why are we doing anything? Yeah. So um, you're drawing on on some personal oh feelings yeah. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, you know, a lot of a lot of cheaty is just me hiding in plain sight. It's like all mm. the stuff that I don't like about myself, or mm. the things that I know drive people crazy that I sort of hide and 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 bury deep beneath my my chest and and stomach. Um, I, I let it out, and uh, and so yeah, the that that episode in particular was very freeing um yeah and it was also a little gonzo which was you know for me it's like i i feel like it's often my my job to sort of like ground things a little bit and and sort of be the guy that sets up the sort of wacky moments and react to them but at this point in this episode it was i i i was the one that went off the rails completely yeah and yeah when you talk about gonzo you're talking shirtless cheaty oh yeah which got you know which broke the internet after that particular yeah. episode. Not that you were looking. You didn't, you didn't kind of look to see the reaction to. No, 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 no. I was afraid that, <laughs> I was afraid that the episode aired and people yeah. were going to be like, what is wrong with Chidi? What is wrong with his body? Yeah. Put him away, you know? But, um, but yeah, so, yeah. But then, like, a, a buddy of mine actually texted me and was just like, hey, man, you did okay. And I was like, oh, okay, good, great, great. I, no one's mad at me. You were, you were really rocking that who, what, wine pink yeah. t-shirt there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Was... What, how many, I mean, how many choices do they go through for, say, that t-shirt, which was a very, I mean, it seems like this is the kind of show, like, for the chili recipe, the, the canned chili, the peeps, and yeah. the M&Ms. Like, how many variations of that did they have? Well, they, all right, as far as the shirt, they only let me have, like, tight or extra tight. And we picked extra tight because we thought it would look the stupidest. Yeah. You know. Um, but then uh, with the uh, the chili, they just. I mean, they made that. It was there were there were peeps in it. There mm-hmm. were there were M and M's in it, and you know they were like, hey, just before you shoot the scene, shoot the scene, you should you should taste this and see if it's something you can you can handle. <laughs> and I did. It was not good. Mm-hmm. But it was, uh, you know, I could I could handle it, and uh, yeah. But that's but I mean, it's best to not when it comes to that sort of thing. Don't don't tell me. Just right. just show me right before, and hopefully right. I don't throw up. You know. How many takes? How many how many spoonfuls of that chili did you have to to go through? I started on? I started to get like started to kind of like it. Like towards the end, <laughs> it was like an <laughs> odd yeah. yeah. Because I had also you know. I was thinking maybe you're working around the peeps, but it sounds like no, you're... No, man. I got in there. I'm actually... I feel like I'm one of, like, five people in the United States that actually kind of likes peeps. Mm. I, I do think they're pretty good. I like So Easter was great for you. Easter was... Yeah. I used to hate him when I was a kid, and I grew up and got some taste buds, and I realized that they're awesome. Nice. Yeah. So you have had some great opportunities because of this show for some reflection, mm-hmm. but also... Like you're in a movie this summer, yeah, called Midsummer. Mid, I, yeah, Midsommar. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was gonna, I was gonna yeah. let you. I might be this. saying it wrong too. So it is the uh, Ari Aster from Hereditary. Yeah, the director. Yeah, 
and it sounds like you're involved with some, it's about a couple who goes to some kind of pagan festival? They, yes, yes, they, they go to Sweden mm -hmm. for a, a midsummer festival, um, and you know, there's like a group of friends that goes with them. Um, and I'm one of those one of those uh, one of those friends. I, I'm a, I'm an academic who's like obsessed with uh, northern and western pagan traditions. I'm writing my thesis on it. And uh, you're an and academic. Huh? I'm an academic. That's a little stretch yeah. for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough because I mean it's I mean I'm just a layman in all things, mm -hmm. and so to like ever pretend to be an expert is just me. But now everybody's, Lying, thinking, everybody's you know? thinking you're a really good liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. liar. Or, or I'm like, or they think I'm really smart. Maybe I'm just, but no, no one thinks I'm smart. <laughs> no. So you are one of the friends who goes to this, this festival, and yeah. I'm assuming that maybe by the end of it, he, the, your character is probably not going to end up in the good place. Well, you know, I mean, I mean well, we'll they're see. two different we'll universes, see. so yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, uh... It looks, yeah. the trailer looks, looks intriguing. It's Let's strange, see. yeah. I mean, I think Ari called it like Wizard of Oz for perverts. He called it Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz for perverts, yeah. yeah. It is, great. Is, that a, is that an accurate description, do you think? I wouldn't have thought of it that way, but the more I, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's, about that's it. absolutely that's it. It's the tone, okay. Yeah. And then you made a movie with Todd Haynes, too? Yeah, so yeah. Just working with the auteurs here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 fun. It now that's a really, that's a really, really interesting, really important story. Um, it's a it's actually about you know the lawyer who wound up um, fighting Dupont mm -hmm. because of poison in the water and mm -hmm. with with this compound that you know we is on Teflon. It's, you know something that I think a lot of us grew up with, which yeah, and still. And yeah. still, yeah. Yeah, I just you know. I just bought a new set of pans like you get two months pans? ago. No, to get rid of it. It was like oh, okay. I kept reading about this, you know, the coatings. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, and so it's uh, so I can make my chili with the pubes. You could. You, that's exactly what you should do with those, because you know what? I think probably the uh, no, actually, now I imagine the marshmallows and stuff would actually stick to those a little bit worse. So you may, you may not be the pot to do it. I love how I completely just hijacked your thought about the deep, the, the very important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I brought it back to yeah, marshmallows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. No, but I mean, it's fine. Um, it sounds yeah, it's it's a true story. Yeah. And you and Mark Ruffalo is the lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. And what what are you playing in the film? I play an, another lawyer actually uh, at the firm that that he works works for. Another intelligent character. Another smart guy. <laughs> Just lying. Just lying. Just huh? lying. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, we've been asking everyone who comes in um, same questions okay. for these kind of lightning round thing. What is the last TV show that you binge watched? Into the Badlands. Okay, okay. Are you watching Game of Thrones? Yeah. Who do you think is going to win? Oh, well, that's so complicated. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I honestly feel like probably at this point, giving us John on the throne is like sort of the, where we're headed. And because that feels like where we're headed, that's not what we're getting. Yeah. You know? It's, it, we're all trying to sort of outguess each other on, yeah. on the, on the yeah. ending. Like, okay, well, this is where it looks like it's going, so maybe it's not. It, it absolutely can't be going that way, right? right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, what classic TV show would you have liked to have been on? Classic TV show I would have liked to have been on. Oh, man. I love Lucy. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. That was, yeah, it was, I, I grew up watching that, like, when I was supposed to be in bed. Like, I will watch an hour of it before going to sleep so often. And I feel like I got through the entire series, so it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yeah, it so was, funny. It's like Seinfeld has kind of become that series yeah. for this generation, where if you live in L.A., it's on every night at 10 o'clock, and yeah. people still watch it. Lucy was like that, yeah, it was on every night on some station. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. What's the worst job you ever had? 
worst. Um, it's probably a waiter. Yeah. I was a waiter at a Cajun restaurant in Mesquite, Texas, and that was not fun. <laughs> I was, I was, and I, cause I also didn't, I was such a bad waiter that I didn't make tips, mm. really, so it was like a, it was why, just why a Why were you a bad waiter? Uh, you know, uh, forgetful, nervous, um, and, you know, it was, I was like, I had one thing that I could do, which is like, when people had birthday parties, I was like, loud, and I could like, get the whole restaurant hyped up, so I worked everyone else's table's birthday parties and would ignore my own. And therefore, everyone else will get these great tips and get tips off of me, and I would be neglecting my own tables, trying to like you know perform for the house to make it a festive atmosphere. And uh, yeah, it was just just poor Not time calling. management. Not my call. I shouldn't calling. have been doing that. Yeah. Okay. What has you more excited, the Sopranos prequel or the Breaking Bad sequel? I think the Breaking Bad sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I actually, I've only watched like four or five episodes of The Sopranos. I feel like this one of those cultural moments that I just skipped. Mm -hmm. So I need to get back into it though, because I, the four or five that I've watched, I'm like, this writing is brilliant, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and like, I need to do this one, but I just haven't done it yet. Okay. So. Well, thanks so much for coming in today. Thanks it's for having me. It's great talking to you. Yeah. For more of these conversations, you go to latimes.com. Thanks for watching today.